Falconers know their own birds very well. They take much time each day to care for them. To them, the falcon embodies everything that's special about nature. Likewise, falconers care about their prey species. They watch them in the wild and understand them and their habits as well as their falcons. In Britain, these prey species have been vital to the sport of falconry for hundreds of years. There's one bird which has captivated the interest and fascination of falconers since the early days of falconry. The grey partridge. Mainly due to agricultural intensification, this iconic game bird has dramatically declined in number and distribution over the last 40 years. I've been flying grey partridges since 1978-79 with uh, peregrines in this beautiful area of West Yorkshire and the grey partridge population has declined quite dramatically in that period of time. Unfortunately the grey partridge, whilst it's one of the, the few indigenous um, game birds in this country and it's exceptionally beautiful, it hasn't reacted well to modern farming methods. Unfortunately um, the way that the, the farming has changed, the grey partridges have suffered Hopefully, with new sort of conservation techniques and, and our greater knowledge of the, of the game bird, we can start to look to the future and hopefully the future will be brighter. To help halt this decline, the British Falconers Club has dedicated its efforts to do everything they can to help restore the numbers of this much-loved species throughout the British countryside. The British Falconers Club has therefore joined forces with the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, the GWCT, which is the world authority in grey partridge management and conservation. In 1911, about 35,000 gamekeepers in Britain managed more than a million pairs of grey partridges. In the 1950s, agricultural practices including the introduction of pesticides, the loss of hedgerows, and a dwindling number of gamekeepers radically altered the grey's habitat and predator numbers. This resulted in an 86% decline in partridge numbers over the last 40 years to just 70,000 today, possibly even less. For falconers, an easy way to help partridges is to offer additional food to spring pairs by providing feed hoppers. These have been shown by the GWCT to also help songbirds, such as the yellowhammer, to get through periods when food is in short supply. However, to restore partridge numbers, food hoppers alone are like a drop in the ocean. Most importantly, the bird's habitat needs to be restored alongside professional predation management. What most people seem to forget is that suitable habitat needs to be provided all year round, as grey partridges are resident birds. Hence, providing overwinter cover to protect the coveys from raptors is as important as nesting and foraging cover, so that parent birds can take their chicks to find the essential insect food they need for survival during the first few weeks of life. Henry Robinson, a farmer and keen falconer, lives in an area where the grey partridge has nearly become locally extinct. As he feels equally passionate about his falcons as he does about grey partridge, he asked GWCT expert Peter Thompson to advise him on how to restore partridges back onto his ground. Looking at that hedge over there, yeah. any hedge where you've got that pale base along the bottom, yeah. it means you've got plenty of good dead grass. Put one there, um, and, and if there are any partridges that knocking around, it's very often that that will keep them to stay. They've found a good food source, yes, yeah. they, they'll pair up, um, and, and as I say, there's, there's right. about 20 metres from a, a hopper is about where they'll nest. Right. Which is amazing. Well, that's, that's, that's well, and these are lovely, you know, this is yeah, perfect yeah, this, for this, them, this it, nice, tucked yeah. in underneath yeah. this, yeah. so that's fine. Putting out um, 
ideally parent reared covers in the autumn, yeah. um, positioned around the estate next door to this good cover. Um, and then the following season, if they uh, try and breed, that's great. If you get barren pairs, ones that haven't uh, bred at all, then you can actually foster on uh, young partridge onto those. And they'll, they'll accept them very, very readily. Um, and their chances of survival are, 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 are excellent. In order to demonstrate grey partridge recovery, the GWCT set up an ongoing project at Royston in Hertfordshire in 2002. By improving and establishing partridge-friendly habitat where possible, managing predators and by providing additional food, the grey partridges increased from 20 pairs in 2002 to 118 pairs in 2009. Well-managed hedgerows are one of the key habitats at Royston, which provide excellent nesting and overwinter cover. Another key habitat are the specially established beetle banks alongside foraging strips to increase the number and availability of insects for partridge chicks to eat. The insects that overwinter on this bank live in down in the root system, in the dead bits, in this tussocky grass and uh, they hibernate there all winter out of the frost and the rain and the snow and then walk out into the crop uh, in the spring. The other component that's absolutely essential is predator control and this is a tunnel trap in this case it's a Mark VI uh, fen trap that's in this tunnel they have to be within a tunnel uh, to comply with the uh, regulations and this trap is good for catching things like stoats, weasels, rabbits, squirrels and rats. Rats are a major, major problem. The results of a four-year research program undertaken by the GWCT has shown that where local populations have gone extinct, the best way to re-establish them is to release autumn covers. This should be followed by fostering juveniles to those pairs that failed to produce their own chicks and are therefore barren. Where that isn't possible, partridge chicks can be reared under bantams and fostered to a barren pair at an age of approximately three weeks. Barren pairs, no matter whether they're reared or wild, will almost always adopt young partridges because of the species' incredibly strong instinct to stay in groups during the winter months. However, partridges should only be released where suitable habitat has been restored beforehand and where predator management is in place. There are several ways to produce autumn covers. The best would be to produce a parent-reared family group in other words, where a pair of captive-held partridges produce their own chicks. Grey partridge declines can be reversed. The GWCT has shown that by re-establishing habitat, providing food and managing predator numbers, that this iconic bird can once again be abundant in our countryside. Increasing awareness and conservation management by those such as the British Falconers Club and the GWCT is the key to ensuring the future of this extraordinary farmland bird. One way in which you can help grey partridge conservation is by joining the GWCT Partridge Count Scheme to help monitor populations and to get feedback from the GWCT's experts.